So the values of the money we use every day are the values fixed by the government. The paper bills and even the coins are not in themselves actually worth the amounts they represent. As long as people remain confident that our government is strong and secure, they will continue freely to accept and spend its money without questioning the value. Broadcasting from Outback, New South Wales and country Queensland, Australia, this is the FOMO Show. Cryptocurrency for the rest of it. That is the podcast where you'll hear about cryptocurrency in plain English. We'll help you stay across the crypto world so you don't get the fear of missing out. You can find us at FOMO.show. That's FOMO.show. And, mate, it's it's Christmas. It's the holidays. Mate, pretty psyched. Pretty psyched to just not be working for a, for a couple days. It's nice, isn't it, mate? Just being able to kick back, beer in your hand, and you're out in the outback New South Wales at the moment. Just yeah, the just in front of you. You can watch the sunset. Oh, you can watch the storms roll in. Oh man, it's been it's been like it's been weird not recording because yeah, it has it's been like over two and a half weeks now, and so much has happened. Oh mate, do you remember that day when like every all the whole crypto prices just like crumbled and it was yeah. it was cool. I thought it was great, but I mean, it was awesome. It must be something really bad about us that like every time things are down, we celebrate. You know, like <laughs> it's like the market's down. It's like yes. Things are cheaper. Like, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but just seeing some of those stories, man, like um, there was that one story of like someone that had, I think it must have been on Twitter. I don't know if you saw it as well, but someone mm. had like mortgaged their house and bought like a bunch of Bitcoin, like, I don't know, at least $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, oh. maybe more. They like refinanced, sorry. They had, so they already had a mortgage and they refinanced yeah. and they used all the refinancing amount to buy Bitcoin. And it was like right at the height. So right when it hit like <laughs> 19K or whatever it hit. And then, <laughs> and then the very next day it went down to like 14K and they couldn't oh. handle it. And they were just like, nah, I'm getting out. And so they lost like... What? Yeah, they lost like 30 grand or something stupid. That's crazy. I mean, firstly, only put in like a bit of your cash because, you know, if it goes yep. down, you buy some milk. That ass... That's silly, though, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, so much of the narrative, like so much of the stuff that these people are getting fed, like it's it's people saying, "Here's a way to set yourself up for retirement," or like, "Here's a way to make cash quick." And like, yeah, look, it probably is, but I don't know, man. Like, I think people just get into it expecting it to never go down because that's what they've been told. They're like, "Yes, yeah. this year it went from you know, like." a thousand dollars up to twenty thousand dollars and it's just going to keep going and it's like well yeah it probably will but there's going to be dips and oh there was a i thought i think i saw an ask me anything sort of post on reddit where it's like i bought bitcoin at twenty thousand dollars ask me anything (laughs) it was like like the next day when it (laughs) oh it's probably because everyone had those like sell orders probably set up for years just waiting in the exchanges until they executed yeah, and then it hit twenty thousand, and then boop, everyone's just like, "Yep, sell, sell, sell." Yeah, well, it's it, it's like a nice round number, isn't it? To to be like, "Yep, I will at least and at least sell some of them." You know, you mm-hmm. could mm-hmm. you could potentially I, I, a lot of people have been holding them, kind of eating noodles and working a <laughs> nine to five job, just holding their Bitcoin because you know they just want to see how high it goes, and they don't want to cash out if there's a lot more to be made. But I feel like. If they if they bought in at like a hundred dollars and it's now twenty k, surely they're going to be starting to say, "Well, why do I still need to eat noodles?" Yeah, that's true. Can, mm. uh, at least I can eat McDonald's or something. And hey, from my Lamborghini in a drive through, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Yeah, there comes a point where suddenly you're like, "Okay, I need to I need to make use of some of this." So, did you give, did you give any paper wallets out for Christmas? Man, I did. I gave three out. I, I gave Pivex wallets out, which was oh, um, nice. Which is great because Pivex was at like an all time high when I sat mm. down to do it. I took my printer around with me because I was so busy. I didn't actually get a chance to print the paper wallets out. So it was this like right. hilarious um, mixture of like worlds where I was like I had Pivex, which is like a you know a really good progressive blockchain project, all digital completely you know on the internet mm. and then i was like driving around with this massive printer in my car <laughs> waiting for the chance to print this this pivx out like on paper 
you know? So it was, <laughs> it was just this like funny thing of like really old technology, really new technology. The printer went with me for probably, I don't know, I think we drove about, oh, geez, eight or 900 Ks altogether before I actually had the chance to, to, to get in, <laughs> work out how to do the paper wallet, print it out. And uh, yeah, but it was good, mate. I gave everyone 50 bucks worth of, worth of Pivx. Oh, nice. Stocking stuffer. And everyone seemed really stoked, mate. Like, uh, I actually said, you know, when, you know, at the start of the year, this was worth about 30 cents and now it's worth like 15 Australian dollars. <clears throat> did you? I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I printed out some some wallets before I went on holiday. But, um, yeah, I gave both my parents a uh, 0.05 Litecoin. So, not a huge <laughs> amount. Just just an amount just to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Because um, I must have bought that back when it was about... Two dollars seventy-five in total. That was worth, but now it's worth like you know, twenty bucks or more. Yeah, which is like it's it just just so you can keep a track on the price. But yeah, my mum was so excited. She had her first bit of cryptocurrency, so that was pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, we'll, we'll get there one step at a time. But um, yeah, no, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, so yeah, hope, hope everyone out there has had a, had a great Christmas. Um, so, what are we going to be talking about today, mate? So we're covering um, the main thing we're going to be talking about today is privacy coins. We're going to uh, give a call to Jordan Cronier as well, to nice. see what he's been doing for this holiday period. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear what what sort of South African traditions he's been up to this year. Yeah. <laughs> and we, as usual, we've got some um, some pretty interesting news. It's been another crazy couple of weeks in 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 the crypto world, mate. It feels like. A couple of weeks in the crypto world is like a couple of months in the normal oh, world, you know? Wow. So much has been happening. I mean, we can't really cover everything because you know, it should be here all day, but it's just wild. So, um, yeah, before we get into it, just remember, this is this is not an investment advice. Um, consult with uh, an independent financial advisor, and they will tell you that, firstly, that they have no idea what cryptocurrency is, and secondly, that it's probably the biggest bubble since tulips were invented. Um, but yeah, make sure you, if you do get a financial advisor, make sure they're independent, so yeah, they're at least um, yeah, not just trying to flog you whatever they get commissioned for. Yeah, if you've never bought cryptocurrency before, um, check out our guide at FOMO.show slash 101. Uh, it's got everything you need to know to uh, buy, store, and send your first Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, you can sign up to Coinbase at FOMO.show slash Coinbase. And if you purchase more than 100 US dollars in crypto, uh, you and we will get uh, $10 in free Bitcoin. Yeah, you can sign up normally at Coinbase.com, but you won't get $10 of Bitcoin. So, that's FOMO.show slash Coinbase for essentially free money. Yeah, awesome, man. If you've got any questions on our guide uh, um, about anything you've or anything you've heard on the show, just drop us a tweet or email us or, yeah, join our Slack message board. So, um, uh, we've got a few different people in there at the moment just adding different bits of conversation. So, join us at FOMO.show slash Slack. Cool. We want to do a, a couple of shout outs this episode because uh, it's the Christmas episode. And if you're tuning in from America, um, shout out to you. We've we've been noticing that we've got a lot more American listeners as time goes on. So yeah, great to hear from you. We'd love to hear from uh, from your perspective too. So if you want to jump in Slack, we're we're really interested in what goes on over there. But obviously, we're an Aussie and a and a Brit, so we don't know the the American system like you do. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, do do get in touch. Do send us links that might be useful for other people in America. Um, yeah, we've we've had some some conversation in Slack about you know how the tax stuff is working in America. So um, yeah, get involved there on our, on our Slack for that. Um, yeah. Also, shout out to our crew in Melbourne. Uh, how you doing out there? And uh, welcome to our newest Slack members. Um, yeah. Any links, tools? Just yeah, just send them over to us. We we'd love to hear them. Hey, there's been a lot going on this week. Yeah, there's been a lot going on the last last couple of weeks in uh, in the news. Um, one interesting piece that was on Zero Hedge um, was about how eight different companies actually renamed their camp like uh, publicly traded companies renamed. Uh, there was one of them that was the uh, the Long Island Iced Tea Corporation. They renamed the uh, the Long Blockchain Corporation. And their share price absolutely rocketed. Like it, and this has happened with like a bunch of different companies. There was one called Vape Tech that made sort of batteries for uh, electronic cigarettes. They um yeah then they renamed Node Chain Incorporated. And yeah, stock price just leapt. It's ridiculous. And this happened with a bunch of different companies. <laughs> just adding the word blockchain in it. It's just like the dot com bubble. It's just fantastic. Though, I'm just looking it? at this um this Long Island Ice Tea Corp, which oh, who even knows what that is. Um but they they've gone up by five hundred percent in a couple of days. 
because they, <laughs> they changed their name to the Long Blockchain Corp. I mean, what even is Long Blockchain? Mate, I have uh, I don't think they even they know. Like they don't. Really, <laughs> that's brilliant, though. That is actually brilliant. Oh, it's great. It's great. I mean, if you and if you're you know if you're bag holding those shares from, I mean, think of the guys that had no idea this was coming, but they just bought some shares in this company for I don't know because they liked Long Island Iced Tea or whatever it was, and then they've they seen must it be shoot so up. So confused, oh, mate. <laughs> so basically, the, mo- <laughs> yeah. the moral of the story is: if you want to serve your shareholders well. Rename your company with a blockchain name. There's another country that's that's um, considering a, a, a sort of a national cryptocurrency. It's Israel this time. Um, yeah, apparently, according to some Coin Telegraph sources close to the finance ministry, Israel's black market is approximately 22 percent of um, of GDP. Wow. So um, apparently, digital currency with the centrally controlled by the government of Israel would actually make black market transactions less possible. So, so they're just more steps towards national cryptocurrencies, which is yeah, interesting. It's interesting, but at the same time, would it really, though? Like, if if the black market is 22% of the country's GDP already, so obviously Israel's not doing a great job at controlling it, I'm a little bit sceptical whether just changing, just bringing in a digital currency would change anything because... I mean, mm. surely they'd know enough to transact in Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dash or whatever else. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we we covered we covered this in episode one about the um the Russian central bank. We're talking about having a, a BRICS. Well, actually, it was just the BRICS countries were mulling having a, a single cryptocurrency. Mm. Um, but just the other day, um, the Russian central bank deputy chair said that they're they're going to be looking at this in uh, 2018. I think um, we're going to be having more discussions, sort of fleshing out whether it's whether it's something that they could do or not. And it's 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 a very interesting sort of. Um, a very interesting direction they're moving in. Um, so yeah, trade between Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and the um, Euro- Eurasian Economic Union. Um, so yeah, single cryptocurrency there. It's just still sort of slowly moving, but yeah, one to watch in 2018. Yeah, it's 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 actually quite interesting what their um, the first deputy chairwoman of the Bank of Russia says. She said there's, there are a lot of technological and macroeconomical aspects. So I think next year will be devoted to working out approaches to the possibility of issuing such a supranational currency. So it sounds like they're going to be expending a lot of effort on this, mate. Even if they've mm-hmm. they've kind of dialed back the the conversation a bit on when it's going to come out. Um, uh, well, I guess like- in a, yeah, I guess in a way, like you've got the US dollar, which is used in so many different countries as the sort of the standard currency, and then you've got the e, um, the the euro, which is you know used all across. Uh, all across European Union states, mm. and and then um, and yeah, it looks like this might actually be sort of one of the other contenders there. But you know, as soon as it, if it does get launched, it could be huge, yeah, pretty much straight away, yeah. Which well, is essentially the currency for the developing world, isn't it? Like, so you got the US, the EU, um, but this is really the the currency of the the developing market. I mean, Brazil, Russia, India, China, mm, mm, mm. you know, the, that's. That's probably the countries that are going to be the big players in the next 50 to 100 mm. years mm. Um, that are really kind of emerging. So, mate, if they could tie themselves together with the crypto, yeah, like imagine definitely. trade. You know, the, the, the possibilities for trade would be amazing. All of a sudden, you're not having to exchange things all the time. You've just got one, one currency tying everyone together. Mm. And you could, you, could, <clears throat> you could see it sort of expanding further because, I mean... With China's Silk Road that they've been building, I mean, it's it's now they they're building um, building railways through Thailand now, so it's stretching downwards there. Mm. Uh, and you've also got talk about them stretching through um, through to Afghanistan, which you know China's China's trying to step up in that direction as well. So, yeah, there, there's a huge amount of potential on the countries that this would you would cover. So, I mean, mm. if if it's something that I can pick up in the future, I'm definitely going to pick some up. I mean, mm. see what happens. Yeah. But the other thing to take out of it too is that they're waiting, so it's more time for the decentralized currencies to uh, to get more of a foothold too, which is great. Mm. Mm. Hey, um, last episode we, we covered um, INS in our yeah. um, was it? It was the ICO of the week, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was. Mate, they um they shot up. They they really raised a bunch of money. Yeah, if you if you if you didn't didn't catch the last episode, INS is basically looking to disrupt the grocery 
it's the grocery industry, isn't it? Where instead yeah. of looking to get the money almost directly to the producers um, and sort of solve a bunch of the problems around there. So, mm. um, so yeah. Well, how much were they? Uh, do you know how much they were aiming to raise? I think that was their limit. I'm pretty sure sixty thousand right. ever was their limit. So, and that that comes out around forty three million, which is which is nuts right. to say considering how much Ethereum was worth at the start of the year. But um. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's. I think they they reached their goal, um, and mate, I mm-hmm. reckon they'll need it. <laughs> like, there's a lot of there's a lot of ICOs I see, and I'm like, you know, why do you need that much money? Like, why do you need 250 million? You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, I need to pay a few developers. But the uh, we, we covered it in the last episode, so if you are interested, go back and listen to our last episode. But the logistical difficulties for these guys and the amount of stuff they're going to have to set up, um, I think they've been pretty conservative with 43 million to be honest because there's just so, mm. much, so many moving parts in this industry and um and the other thing is too each country is different i was thinking about this since with the last episode every country has a different setup you know so you've almost got to start from scratch in every single country mm. there's not really any like there's there's grocery conglomerates but they're kind of all pretty country specific mm. uh, there's only a few that kind of have centers in a lot of different countries you know like aldi or um yeah costco or places like that but and it takes a long time for them to actually build up that set of infrastructure i mean amazon have only just like as we mentioned a couple episodes ago they only just launched in australia yeah i mean this is amazon yeah (laughs) yeah so i mean if it's yeah it's good luck well keep an eye on it though yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I, that, I'm sure they'll come up with ways to incentivize people to do a lot of the groundwork on their own. Um, mm. And like we said, you know, manufacturers would love this, uh, but you know, it's it's yet to be seen if it starts picking up how the establishment, like anything with crypto, how the establishment's going to react to it. So mm. it's one to watch. It's really one to watch. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, I'd love to get them on sometime just to to chat about you know logistically how they're going to do it. Uh, mm, but mm. yeah, no, definitely, definitely keep your eye on it. I, I'm hopeful. I hope it's not a scam. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The next six mm. months will tell us whether it is or not. I guess. Yeah, and then oh, oh, snakes. We got like Bitcoin Cash. That got that got launched to Coinbase a little little earlier than anticipated. There's a bunch of stuff that went on with that, but um, it absolutely rocketed. Did you did you did you have any Bitcoin Cash? Oh man, I had a little bit. I didn't have a lot. Um, I've just been so bullish on EOS, to be honest, that oh. <laughs> that most of my uh, most of my investment money's been going there. But um, it was really, man, it, it really kind of stirred up the hornet's nest again. Like, and uh. I, I didn't actually realise there was so much so much vitriol and you know animosity between these two sides, I guess you'd call them, until all this happened because it really kind of it was quite controversial. Coinbase listed it the same day. Roger Ver went on um, CNBC's Fast Money, which is like a, mm. you know, a nationally broadcast show in America, um, mm. you know, essentially talking about Bitcoin Cash and then, uh, you know, Bitcoin dropped more than 25%. So, there was a big sell-off and mm. Bitcoin Cash kind of doubled in price because of the listing. I think at one stage there on Coinbase, before they shut it down, Bitcoin mm. Cash was around like 9000 US dollars or something. <sighs> went absolutely wild yeah yeah so mm. but in the fallout of all this you know like the, and just watching all the personalities on social media it just seemed like everyone was choosing a side mate i don't know did you did you see the same thing yeah yeah well i was i was seeing that i saw a lot of like there were you know some people on twitter were you know doing all the connections between you know cnbc and and trying to work out you know what was going on there and then you you had the you know there were allegations that you know coinbase allegations they're, 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 there's some evidence to it the allegations mm. that uh, coinbase employees were trading in advance based on that knowledge which um you know in in some ways you could say that's fair enough you know like i i think some some proponents have said, you know, insider trading is a victimless crime. Um, but in other ways, you know, people are like, oh, well, I didn't even know that information and other people are making money off it. But mm. oh, it's, it's, it's pretty well because yeah, there was a Reddit post. Someone posted on Reddit a few, a few days before um, Coinbase introduced it. And they said, look, Coinbase is going to introduce Bitcoin Cash in a couple of days. And everyone's like, how do you know that? And he's like, oh, I've got a mate who works at Coinbase. So people knew about it. Yes, yeah, the information was out there. Mm, mm, I just wish I'd known, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, man. The whole thing just kind of... I think we were chatting about it before we all went on holidays. The whole thing kind of struck me 
I just feel like a lot of people just want a side to be on. You know, mm. like it doesn't matter what it is. People want to be able to, you know, wave a flag and 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 really kind of get behind something. And and I get mm. it. Like people, they've invested money in this stuff, and you know they want to see it do well. And like for the people mm. that invested in Bitcoin, when it drops twenty five percent, well, they've you know even though they're way up for the year, uh, their investments dropped and. Same thing for Bitcoin Cash. You know, it's this it's this new thing. It's this fork. They say it's the, you know, the real Bitcoin. Um, so, the people that have got behind that are, are quite defensive about it as well. But I don't know, man. Like, I just feel like we're meant to be better than this. You know, the whole, yeah. point, the whole point where this decentralization thing is happening. I mean, you read Satoshi's white paper, you know, the, essentially the grandfather of crypto. And he talks about, you know, creating an environment where, where there's a true free market. For these, mm. you know, and and these currencies can be automated. They can stand on their own, completely free from, um, you know, hostile interference. And yeah, man, like it just—it it was just kind of like I was watching that whole debate, and I was like, guys, like you, you're completely missing the point. You know, like mm. just be happy that crypto is is up. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter which one. Just just be happy that it's it's getting adoption and. Uh, we've got all these great projects. You don't you don't need to pick sides. Yeah, you know? and I, I, it definitely highlights the fact that you know we, we don't need to be just picking one horse and running with it. There are a bunch of horses in this race, mm. and a bunch of them are doing pretty well in this. And, and uh, you don't have to necessarily pick a winner. I think the most it, what it really shows is that you know with Bitcoin dropping so much, you need to be diversified. I mean, yep. you shouldn't. I mean, like it's a good rule of thumb. Try and not make you know one thing hold up more than you know twenty twenty five percent of your your holdings. I mean, even then is that is pretty high. Yeah, you just want to make sure you're diversified. So if one thing drops or or grows too much, you know it's not taking up a, an undue amount of your your portfolio. Yeah, because I, I think the thing is with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash too, it's it's become so oh, almost centralized around a few of these personalities. You know, like if I mean Bitcoin Cash is a great example because you've essentially got Roger Ver. You know, like he's the mm. he's the face of it. He's the so-called you know evangelizer of of Bitcoin mm. and Bitcoin Cash and the project seems to really be rise and fall on on him a lot of the time, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and then bi- there's all sorts of personalities who are spruiking Bitcoin as mm-hmm. well. But uh, I, yeah, look, I, I think the the w- there's a whole bunch of other cryptos out there that aren't dependent on one personality. You know, they've got mm-hmm. an open source development team. There's a lot of developers contributing, and they're usually bound together more by like just a you know something common that they've agreed on. You know, like mm, we always use mm. PIVX as the example and we'll talk about it it more later. But, you know, they've, they came together and they said, right, we want to create something that's private, something that's basically instant, uh, something that ver- can verify itself even through that privacy. Um, and we want to create something that's, you know, is governed by the stakeholders, no matter how mm. big or small they are. And, you know, that's what drives them. And, and mm. you know, that's awesome. So, yeah, I think, look, I... I mean, my view on it is that you just everyone just needs to take a step back and just mm. look at how far we've come, and then don't get so vitriolic against each other. You know, like c- coins fork from other coins all the time. You don't need to turn around and badmouth the coin that you just forked from. What you should be saying is, "Hey, look, we're going the same direction. Let's work together." Like, if you guys mm. find something, you know, find some bug share the code with us if we find some bug we'll share the code with you you know let's all because the thing is man in the in the back of this the 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 banks are standing there you know and the governments are standing there and and they're working on their own stuff behind the scenes and Mm -hmm. and we've got this limited window uh i don't know if we're going to talk about it later but I, i was reading something recently talking about the um the origins of the internet and how when the internet started, everyone thought it was going to be this great, um, you know, the, the tool that finally broke centralization. Mm. And there was a lot of the discourse back then that goes on now. You know, everyone talks about decentralizing and, and breaking the shackles of the centrally controlled banks and the centrally controlled governments. They talked about all that 25 years ago. And then, mm. and then what happened was that people just built centralized technologies on top of that platform. Mm, um, mm. You know, so I think like we need to look back at those days and say, well, we need to learn our lesson this time and, and really try and reach adoption 
before the you know the, the centralized projects can and you know governments and banks can you know take it all over uh, yeah because you you shared an article the other day about how everything was being sort of all these uh, all the oh, the internet is basically being centralized into a bunch of these behemoths as it was or amazon google facebook they're they're taking up everything pretty much yeah because i mean the internet the internet itself is relatively decentralized like the technology you know you Mm. you you can link two computers together and create your own internet or you can at the moment it's it's all over the world you know there's nodes everywhere but what's happened is is that these five companies have grad very gradually made it so that most of the connections go to their five nodes, wherever they are in the world, there might be hundreds of them, but most of the internet traffic goes there and then goes somewhere else, you know? Mm. Um, And even when you don't think you're going to one of those five, the chances are if it's somewhere that's relatively successful, they've bought up that company and they're actually owned by one of those five, you know? Mm. Um, So things have gotten more and more centralized as time's gone on. And yeah, mate, the blockchain's the same. Look, at the end of the day, it's just a technology. And we've said it before, it could be used for, for a great good and, you know, to free people a bit more. It could be used for, you know, something that some people might call evil and to restrict people more and to control people more. And mm. and that's the danger. So, yeah, mate, I, I, just, I just reckon this is not the time to be divided. It's a time to just go, look, let's cooperate. You know, let's, let's work on this stuff together. Let's build something better. Mm-hmm. Because Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, if you bring together those, those two teams that are now mm-hmm. pushing behind it, and even if they don't want to, they, they obviously won't get back together, but they can still learn things from each other. And mm-hmm. yeah, like if, if Bitcoin implements SegWit2x and it doesn't work, well, then they can say to Bitcoin Cash, well, yeah, it, it didn't work, but this is what we learned, you know, and this is what might go better. And I know it's in our nature to conflict with each other, but mm. yeah, man, I think we've just got to be better. Otherwise, mm. the same mm. thing's going to happen all over again. I agree. Right, so yeah, this week's cool tool is Feedly. Now, it's not necessarily a cryptocurrency tool, um, and you can find it at feedly.com, F-E-E-D-L-Y.com. Now, what it does is it's, it's what's called an RSS aggregator. Now, if you don't know what RSS is, any website where you see that sort of uh, orange icon where it looks like a Wi-Fi icon with a dot and three sort of curved lines coming out it, um, that's, that suggests the website has, like, it's on most news sites um, that you can, that, that are out there. So instead of having to go to that news site every day, you can actually subscribe to their RSS feed where you actually get up, get a little um, update whenever news comes out. Now, Feedly lets you aggregate hundreds of news sources all into one place. So instead of having to go to the BBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, la, 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 you actually can aggregate all of their RSS feeds into one place. Um, So with Feedly.com, with the free version, uh, you can sign up for free at Feedly.com. There's also a pro version if you're interested. It gives you a bunch more features. But Basically, you can just subscribe to all your different cryptocurrency news sources in one place. You know, you could have one category for where all your cryptocurrency projects are in there. You could have another category for just cryptocurrency news sites. And instead of having to go to, you know, all of your different websites, you can just have it in one place. And that's really useful. I've been using Feedly for four or five years, maybe more now. Um, and I have about 600 odd news sources I can get into one place. Mm-hmm. And you, I just can't remember the names of all 600 news sources to actually go there on a daily basis. Feedly just pulls it all into one place and it's so convenient. Yeah, mate, you put me onto this. I'd, I'd never even heard of it before. Uh, I have, I'd used RSS aggregators before, but nothing like this. And then when I saw, I think I walked in, I think it was at work one day and, and you had it open on your computer and I was like, what is that? And and then I saw how you had it set up and I was like, oh, I've got to get onto this. And so I went home and set it up and it has made such a difference in keeping across everything that's going on in the crypto world. Like I've set up a lot of custom um, feeds and I've added different sites to each of those feeds mm. and... You can wake up in the morning, sit down to eat your breakfast, and you click on Feedly, and it's got this thing called Today, and it just shows mm. you for each of the uh, the feeds you have, like the you know the six top 
articles in that feed and you can just scroll th- scroll through and mm. man a lot of the time I don't even I don't even read the article like some of them I do and it's great because you can open the article up just in the feedly thing you don't need to go to the mm. actual site but it just it gives me a good overview of what's going on that day and mm. you, you feel mm. like you've got even if you don't have a lot of time you feel like you've got your finger on the pulse um, mm. and it just looks cool too like they've mm. got a few different views and they've got this thing called um, um, cards view which is it kind of like it puts them in rows of three or four and I don't know, man. It, it just really fits the way I like to, to look at things. So if you're an obsessive newsreader, um, really highly recommend Feedly. Uh, feedly.com. You can get started for free and you can create, um, I think it's uh, three different categories. So you can um, put a bunch of news in each category. And yeah, you can sign up for free. And now I personally pay for the um, for the pro version, and it's very much worth it because I can tag different articles with different tags. So you know, if I'm I'm interested in you know uh, solar power, for example, so I've got a little tag called solar, so I can actually come back to that later on um, and just see all my solar, all the articles I've tagged solar, so I can come back to them. You can save things for later. Really, really good, and you can do power search, highlight different bits, but. Feedly.com, really worth checking out if you if you really like consuming news and you don't want to have to go to 20 different sites. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to miss 2017, you know. Yeah, so am I, man. It's been a huge year, hasn't it? Like, oh, mate. Like, yeah. so much has happened, man. Mate, this block, like, yeah, just like looking at my crypto portfolio for the year, it's probably been the biggest year of growth. It's just nice to see, like, this is a year where it's finally coming to the mainstream. You know, yeah. Bitcoin isn't just some, you know, it's, oh, it's just for these criminals and, and, and pedophiles. It's, it's, gone, it's gone from that sort of, like, dirty view of black market the underworld money, which no doubt does drive, you know, a certain percentage of the economy, but definitely not the majority. Um, and it's nice that it shifted from that sort of view of, you know, pirates and, and rogues into sort of a way more, you know, this is now that something that you, people are considering for their retirement. And it's just such a great time, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it, I don't know, I mean, I feel like so much has been packed into this year. Like, so much has happened. I, like what we were saying before, like two weeks feels like two months. Mm. It has just felt like a, it's a really landmark year for this tech. I guess it's probably, yeah, like we keep drawing parallels to the the internet, but there must have been a time where they felt like when Netscape came out and people really started to get it on their computers and, you know, like there were search engines and everyone was building websites. Mm. It must have really felt like they'd finally made it. You know, like mm. no longer were they these like people, you know, who who would would be at parties and the conversation would go that way and they'd be like, Oh, there's this new technology, it's gonna change the world and people are just like, Yeah, whatever. Like mm. you, know, you sound crazy. You're talking about computers like networking up and you know, like sending information to each other. That's nuts. Mm. Right. Well, I, I had a mate who come over from the UK recently. He's now, um, the, the, the rules aren't, like, it's not as easy to get cryptocurrency in the UK as it is in Australia. He's come over here and the number of conversations he's overheard with, or not even with me being involved, where he's just, he's just heard so many conversations that people are having in pubs, at cricket matches, about cryptocurrency. Now, this is just like people wearing, you know, football, like so, like cricket hooligan shirts. Not really cricket hooligan. But, like, they're wearing just random T-shirts. They're not some bloke in, you know, who's looking like a nerd. This is just some random dude who likes cricket mm. who's just loves cryptocurrency. And he's just said, look, the number of conversations, it's crazy. I have to get in now. Yeah, because, because everyone's talking about it. And, yeah, like, maybe it is mainly South Korea investing at the moment. But, yeah, mate, people are going to really stuck into it and it's awesome like it's mm. it's great to see that it's becoming part of the public consciousness and mm. yeah man i think that's why we we do this and we you know we want to talk about expanding upon it and and what it actually means you know like things like decentralization because it has to go further than just investment if we if we really want to um we really want to make these things work people need to understand why they were built in the first place and mm-hmm. why all the early adopters felt like Bitcoin was such a good thing. And if we can make people understand that and mm-hmm. and want mm-hmm. that as well, uh, then I think we'll almost be there. Yeah. You know? Definitely. So, yeah, 2018 is going to be really interesting, man. Like, what, what? I mean, what's your prediction for 2018? 
Well, I still think that, you know, we still haven't even reached this. Like, we're still only on early adopters. I mean, we're, we're just in the late stages of early, like, uh, we're, we're in the early stages of the early majority joining. Mm. Like, there's, I think there's some kind of adoption curve. Um, uh, this, I think I learned about this back in, yeah, so you've got early adopters. But, yeah, I think we're still only even, we're, we're just in the early adopter stage. I mean, it's still like if you're buying cryptocurrencies, you're still one of the crazy ones. Yeah. It's not like it's it's being heard about and talked about in the mainstream. But in the same way, you know, people still haven't adopted. So we've had the innovators. That's that's happened. That's like that's sort of there. And and yeah, early adopters, it's still happening. So I reckon we're still going to see some massive growth in 2018, mm. probably unlike we've seen in 2017. I think because when people are seeing what's going on, people are starting to click. People are going to get more more evangelists come on TV and, and have interviews. People sharing how much money they're making off this. And yeah. then people are thinking, I need to get in on this. Yeah. So that's why I think, like, we're talking about privacy coins later. But in 2018, crypto is going to grow like nothing else. And I think privacy coins are going to see huge growth. Yeah. Huge growth in 2018. That's what I reckon. What about you? What do you reckon is going to go? Yeah, mate. I think you talk about the adoption curve, and I think that's really true. I think we are in a stage where maybe where the TV was, you know, 60 years ago, and mm-hmm. or like the internet was 20 years ago. And at the moment, it's 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 still quite inaccessible. Um, mm-hmm. Like to get into crypto, you still you have to go into Coinbase or wherever else, and you've got to buy it. Then you've got to if you want to get something else, you got to send it to an exchange. You got to verify your identity. You got to wait for all this stuff to happen, and then you can finally go in and and exchange your coins. Or, um, or you got you got services like Changely, which help. Uh, but then you still, on the other end, have to set up a wallet on your computer. Uh, you got to learn about how to secure your public and private keys. Mm. So you got to make sure you don't have any malware on your computer. There's all these things that are just really, I guess, stopping the. The, the mass adoption yeah, um, and they're, they're, they are real barriers. And I think 2018 is the, the year you're going to start seeing people really try and cut that down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we've seen a killer app yet. Like some people have said, oh, Ethereum mm. is crypto's killer app. I don't think we've, I don't think that's true. Um, Ethereum, as we've talked about before, has some really big problems and um, it's just not that accessible. I mm. think you're going to see one, maybe a few of the future big, big players in this space emerge next year mm-hmm. with really accessible ways to do things. And I think it's going to be on the back of some kind of product offering. I think it's going to – we laugh about CryptoKitties, but what CryptoKitties did was they actually let people interact with the blockchain in a fun way um, mm-hmm. and you know get something of value – that wasn't the currency itself. Um, mm-hmm. Now, it was just a digital kitty, but that's the kind of innovation I think we're going to start seeing. And I think that to be accessible, it's going to need to be paired with something else that really incentivizes mm-hmm. people to get into mm-hmm. it. I, th- I think you're 100% right. And I think the nail on the head that you've got is that there is a massive usability problem. There's a massive user experience problem. And 2018 has got to be the year where, yeah, so it's just like with the internet when you're starting up. And remember, you had to you know plug all these sets of cable was in, you had to sort it out and your computer and all that. This year needs to be the year of plug and play mm. where people can just very immediately just th- be like, ah, oh, this is what it is. Because, you know, you're still having to explain you know, public, private keys, you know, all that sort of thing. It's still not regular language. It's still not just a, a simple concept. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think right now we're still in the PC stage. We're yep. still in the like build it yourself, buy your own parts, put it all together, install your operating system, troubleshoot it yourself, all that kind of stuff. I think next year will probably be the year that the first crypto console, at, you know, mm. is launched. You know what I mean? Like the, mm. the equivalent mm. of like a crypto console. So you're going to start seeing like a, a a Nintendo or a PlayStation of crypto come out, and they're going to mm. say. Those PC guys, they know all this stuff. They can they can do their waltz themselves. That's fine, but we can get you into the crypto world in like five minutes and you don't need to worry about all the stuff they worry about. And once we see something like that, once crypto has its console moment, um, Mm. I think that that's when we're going to start really seeing that adoption curve just shoot up because, Mm. yeah, like currency is one thing, but the blockchain has so much more utility than the currency. Mm. Um, And once people start... 
really getting a hold of that and businesses start realizing what they can do with the blockchain, I think then the currency part of it will just plug into that because they're going to need mm-hmm. something that's liquid and that that's you know built on a blockchain itself that can interact with things. And so, yeah, I think that's where you're going to start seeing like companies partner with other decentralized crypto projects to handle the, the payment side of things mm-hmm. and they're going to use the blockchain to... Uh, improve the business side of things with smart contracts and everything else. Mm-hmm. Another thing to really watch is decentralized autonomous organizations. I think yeah. that's going to be, uh, if someone can nail that and get that working really well, um, we're looking at you, Aragon, <laughs> then I think you're going to really start seeing a shift in how people do business together as well. Mm-hmm. That's great. Companies without borders, and it's just what we need. It's what the inter- it's what the internet really needs: systems of consensus and working together without having to. That's yeah, great. mate. It's, it's exciting, man. Like I'm, right. I'm really excited to see to see where things go. So. And yeah, so we'll be we'll be covering this in 2018. We'll be we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on things. But just it's not just about us. If you see things that you think are coming up and could be huge, send it to us. We'd love to take a look. Yeah, and look, if you're actually involved in something you think that could be massive too, like um like Kay last week with Alethea, mm. we, we'll have you on. Like just just let us know. Drop us an email. Say hey, look, this is what I'm involved in. Um, we'd love to have you on. We'd love to talk about it. And yeah, we just love to get your view on on what makes your project tick why you're doing it and you know how it's going to help mm, but yeah awesome. mate 2018 i think is going to be a massive year so looking forward Ooh. to it that is wow it's so exciting though because it's just knowing that things that you that have grown massively this year have seen nothing yeah because we're still not even an early majority like we're still just about getting there so Gang in now is exciting. It's really exciting. So yeah, do remember to check it. Like if you haven't been into it yet and you're super excited, check out FOMO.show slash one oh one. Cool. Um, did you see that there's this thing that just came out um about a Monero mining bot on Facebook Messenger? No. So I was just I was just reading this just then. Um there's a there's a malware that's spreading through Facebook Messenger on phones, that's a Monero mining bot. That's fantastic. Good on the person <laughs> who made that. Like, I don't usually, like, we shouldn't approve of people who make viruses and run scams and stuff like that. But to be fair, like, people just, wow. Just click on anything. Like, because you, you still got to click on the link for this. So it's like a message that comes up in your Facebook Messenger and mm. you need to click on the link. But, um, yeah, it's apparently called Digimine. It originates in South Korea, of course, um, <laughs> and it propagates itself through Facebook's messaging app and is used to mine Monero. So, yeah, if you click on it, then it's on your phone and your phone will just sit there mining Monero quietly. Oh, mate. And it's funny, mate, because phones, like their processors now are actually decent mm-hmm. enough that it, you, could, you, know, you could actually make a decent amount with it. So... Wow. Yeah, and apparently, so okay, so it says so far, Trend Micro has traced this malware to malware to Vietnam, Azerbaijan, Ukraine, the Philippines, Thailand, and Venezuela, of all places. Um, <laughs> I wonder if it's if it was Jordan that did it, but <laughs> it says it's not far off. The Digimine will reach other countries, given the way it propagates. So Blimey. there you go. It's coming, mate. That's yeah. You're right. Like it's it's not great that they're doing it, but at the same time, you've got to take your hat off. All right, so now we're going to talk about privacy. Oh, wait, mate. We've, we've got a call coming in. Mate, can you just take that? I've just got to duck away for a second. Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah. Uh, hello. Jordan, great, great to hear from you. How, how you doing? Oh, this is a little strange, though. I must admit, uh, I, I usually talk to Matt. Uh, where, where is he? Oh well, Jordan, I'm I'm not real sure actually. He he mentioned something about too much Christmas trifle catching up with him, and I haven't really seen him since. Um, anyway, what have you been up to this this holiday period? Oh, Joe, you would you would not believe what happened. Huh? It's been a, a movie these last couple of weeks for me. Really, Jordan? Just these last couple of weeks? Oh yes, Joe. 
completely unusual. Huh? Uh, first, I escaped from Mohammed bin Salman's house arrest and fell in with some oil truck drivers heading out of Saudi. Things went a little south with MBS and the ICO project, Joe. So you, so you didn't finish the ICO before you left, Jordan? Oh, not, re- not really, Joe, no. Why was that? It started with the, the name Salmon Coin, and it basically went on from there. Eh? And you were imprisoned for that? Well, uh, house arrest, Joe. It's, it's hard to feel like you're truly imprisoned when you're staying in a six-star hotel. Huh? I, I did actually get to meet some uh, some really famous Saudi princes, there, and, I, and I think when things die down, I'll have uh, plenty of consultant work to uh, to return to in the Great Republic. Um. So how did how did you escape, Jordan? Well, one of the uh, one of the Saudi princesses uh, princesses took a particular liking to me. Huh? I'm poor, poor Fatima. She's probably still waiting for me at the oasis. Anyway, Joe, the, the, the details are not important. What what is important is that I've worked my way in a southwesterly direction towards Morocco. I figured it was about time I took a real holiday after this whirlwind year. 2017's been crazy. Huh? Little did I know that MBS was not too enamored with my daring escapade, so he actually sent some of his best troops after me to, to return me to the Great Republic and help him with his uh, Salman ICO. Yeah, it sounds like deep trouble, Jordan. Oh, not only that, Joe, but at the same time, the Venezuelan government has dispatched their, uh, their special service to try and bring me back to jail here. You know, black ops, black helicopters, special... Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Yikes, you, you seem to have made a real habit of breaking out of jail recently, Jordan. Oh, no, I tell you this, Joe, it's getting very hard to keep track of international treaty arrangements. I was up all night last night checking Wikipedia to make sure I had it straight. What a life you'd lead. So, what happened? Oh, so I made it to, uh, to Morocco, which is a story in itself, I admit, and I saw, scored myself a nice little mansion on the Mediterranean. They have a slightly delayed crypto, lo- local crypto exchange here, and it seems that the market for Zimbabwe coin is still up, so I had no trouble getting access to funds. Huh? But, uh, however, both the, uh, the Saudis and the Venezuelans are, are hot on my heels. They, they've made it to the mansion at the same time, and it, it seems that both had orders to bring me back at all costs, so uh, all hell broke loose, Joe, you know? So Suddenly, Saudis are firing on Venezuelans. Venezuelans are firing on Saudis. It was spectacular, Joe. Absolutely spectacular. So, so who who won? I couldn't tell you, Joe. The moment they, they appeared on the security cameras, I was at the back running toward the helipad. I used some of my fortune to pay for a helicopter pilot on retainer. He swooped in, picked me up. I was able to watch the firefight on my phone while I flew away. Wait, so so where are you now, Jordan? This is getting ridiculous. So, Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere safe. Huh? I'm, well, I finally get to get a break, you know. I've, I've had, I've, I haven't brought many possessions with me, so there's nothing that I can be identified by. Just me, the beautiful beach, and the, the phone I stole from MBS, which I'm actually calling you on, funnily enough. Wait, you took his phone? Oh, yes, Joe. I needed some way to get to my subscribers. Hold on, Jordan. Does, does, does this phone have its location turned on? Oh, well, yes, that's how I got there. Huh? You've got to use navigation somehow. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, no. 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 They found me. Must have got the coach, huh? Matt, I only just caught the, the tail end of that. Was that Jordan? Mate, he's he's an absolute idiot. Can you? Uh, this is ridiculous. I literally do not understand why we keep this guy on our payroll, Matt. Like, he's he's an absolute fool. What's he gone and done now? Well, basically, he was, you know, he was in Saudi the other week. Yeah. So he's, he was, so he tried to rope in, you know, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia to, to, to work on one of his silly projects. Oh, of course he did. Then he ditched the project halfway through. Then he gets in prison. Like, he's, he's just trying to run away. Then he gets in prison. Then he tries to escape this, you know, this Saudi. You know, and he's got the Saudis after him. Then he runs to the Mediterranean. Then he gets caught. And then the Venezuelans come after him. And then he's just, oh, it's, it's just a bit too much. So I don't actually know where he is. But um, it seems he's stolen the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia's phone. So um, Right. Well, that not- sounds like Jordan. No matter what, I'm sure it'll come out okay. If he, if he hasn't been killed or fallen off something somewhere by now i think i don't think there's anything that's going to get him he just he's he's like a cat he's got nine lives doesn't he i do think we need to have a discussion with him about his retainer though 
because he hasn't put an article in for us for weeks. It's true. Yeah, yikes. All right. So today we're going to be talking about privacy coins. Privacy coins is something I'm so excited about for this year because when we were just doing the notes for this, I was going through looking at the different coins that we got listed out. Now, like we've seen a lot of these before, but the more I'm sitting there thinking about it, and then you search Google Trends and you just on Google Trends, go to trends.google.com, type in um, privacy cryptocurrency, and you can just see it's just it's taking off. Yeah. And it's still early. I mean, with crypto as a whole being so early, privacy coins are going to be huge. Yeah. So this is the real sector where I've got the real FOMO because, you know, one of them that we'll mention later, um, which is um, Zcoin, I was watching this when it was at $12 and it's now 100 and something dollars. And I was just sitting there thinking, I have to get some of this. And I didn't. And I'm kicking myself. So I don't want to miss out on any of these ones, to be honest with you. Um but yikes. Yeah, so, so let, let's jump in then. Um, because, mate, it, it really is. It's something really close to our heart too. Like, I feel like privacy coins, like I was really fortunate enough that my first crypto purchase was a privacy coin. And mm. that wasn't really for like for, for, for me having a big deep think about it and saying, oh, well, I think that, that you know, the governments are going to get involved and privacy coins are the way to go. I just really liked what they were doing. I was like, mm. yeah, it's private, it's instant, it's secure, sign me up, you know. Um, mm. But like now that governments are taking more of an interest uh, and we're really starting to see a lot of talk about regulation and taxing things twice and three times and four times, um, mm. I think this, yeah, this year may be well be the year that privacy coins see a huge rise, you know, and people mm. really start taking a big interest in them. So, what makes a cryptocurrency a privacy coin? Well, to understand it, you first really need to understand normal crypto. And we've covered this in our blockchain basics. So, please, if you haven't listened already, go back through the episodes. We've, we've essentially run through the basics of the blockchain from episode two onwards. Um, but... Essentially, Bitcoin, a Bitcoin-type coin is the best example of this because they're the most common. And with a Bitcoin-type coin, you have what's called a public and a private key. And your transactions are recorded on a public ledger that everyone can see. So if you have the address of someone, you can essentially see everything they've ever done. So you can see who they've sent things to, how much is in their account, and you can see who they're getting, receiving things from. So it's essentially like being able to look into someone's bank account and see exactly what's there. Mm -hmm. um, you, you need their public key, but more and more, that's probably not going to be a difficult thing to get. Mm -hmm. And what that means is it's actually a really huge privacy issue because if someone can work out what your public key is and they can connect that to your identity, you're a lot easier to hack. Uh, mm. They can set up targeted hacks towards you and, and really try and get in because if they know you've got 100 Bitcoin, they know that they can expend a significant amount of effort and they'd be willing to just to crack into your account. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, there's a big problem there and that hasn't really been fixed. So while a lot of people say that, you know, Bitcoin is, uh, you'll see on the news that they're saying, oh, Bitcoin's totally anonymous, completely anonymous, this, that, and the other. It's as soon as you're an associated with an address, that's when things can go really south. Um, and privacy coins change that. Now, while they're still secure cryptographically, they cloak their keys in different ways. And different privacy coins use, take different approaches to securing transactions and almost sort of trying to distance themselves from your, the, your public address. Um, so, for example, they let the blockchain recognize your public and private keys without necessarily having to share details on transactions publicly. So, who you're sending things to or where you've received money from. Yeah. So, essentially, it's an extra step behind the scenes with, with maths involved to make sure it's all secure. Um, so, while you can't see it, the blockchain will still recognize those transactions and recognize that they're legitimate. Now, mm. there are some trade-offs. Uh, so, you can't explore the blockchain to the same level of detail in some cases that you normally can. So, with Bitcoin, like we said, you can open up what's called a block explorer. You can type in an address and you can see exactly uh, yeah, how much is in that account, what transactions has been sent to and from that address. Um, and you can't do that with a lot of these privacy coins. And it also means that 
they're a bit more unwieldy sometimes. They're harder to use um, because you have to take more steps to protect your privacy than normal. So one of the big questions is why do we need privacy coins? Now, it sounds a bit silly to explain, but I mean, it's often it's the, it's the same sort of reason we have locks on bathroom doors. You know, you've got anonymity. No one needs to connect you with what you've just done. You know, like it's harder. Like it's you don't necessarily need people knowing what you're doing. Um, it's just just for your your own sort of personal security. It's 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 harder to track you um, with privacy coins, unlike with Bitcoin. And that extra step is is worth taking. Then you've got security. You know, same as you know, having a lock on a bathroom door. You got peace of mind. You know, you're re- reassured knowing that you're safe. Um, no one needs to know what you're doing. Uh, and you can actually protect, protect yourself down the line, I mean, by giving yourself that extra step away. Um, and you can be yourself. You know, you're not being watched, so you don't have to, you know, adjust your behavior. I mean, you find this with mass, like since the Snowden leaks, when people, everyone's aware of mass surveillance, for example, and you're finding that lots and lots of people, like um, surveys and polls have shown this, that people actually adjust their behavior, things that they're searching for, things that they're doing, because they know that they're being watched and that impacts people's behavior and that in itself isn't necessarily great so with privacy coins you can actually you can actually be yourself without having to necessarily worry and adjust your behavior based on uh, the knowledge of being watched Mm. And, and look, it's not just about what's happening now. You know, look, it's not just about privacy now. Like you said there, it's about protecting yourself down the line. We don't know what's going to happen down the line. And, you know, governments can enact retroactive laws. Um, hackers can get increased technology or quantum computing can, can change the game, you know. And if you've got your public key out somewhere, there is a chance that with quant- quantum computing, uh, they could, you know, reverse engineer it and, and find out your private key. So, um, and there's a whole bunch of other consequences that, you know, and, and potential um, negative things that could happen down the line. Mm. And it just means that you're taking some extra steps to make sure you're protected. And uh, look, it, it, it's it's like that theory that people always go for the, you know, the lowest hanging fruit or the mm. the most vulnerable. Privacy coins are all about creating an extra step to protect yourself and make yourself a harder target than everyone mm. else. And you've also got the big issue of tax. Mm. Um, now, it depends on the crypto, on the private the privacy coin that you own, but with, with some of them, it's much, much harder to work out how much somebody has in assets. Now, that's going to be a huge issue for a lot of people who are getting into cryptocurrencies specifically you know, to avoid sort of government oversight being taxed on things. If they don't know how much you have, then they can't sort of tax you based on um, how much it may have gone up or down because they are, you know, they have less knowledge of, you know, they, they have no knowledge of how much you have. In a lot of countries, you have income tax, which is, you know, the tax on your income and that's taxed at the source. And then there are other taxes which relate to commodities or shares or securities and everything else. And the difficulty at the moment is no one really knows what, cryptocurrencies are and a lot of governments are changing their mind on it basically at their whim so Mm. you one day you could be fine you could have been trading crypto you could be holding it you could be fine and then all of a sudden the law could change and retroactively you may Mm. have to pay a whole bunch of tax now while governments think they had the prerogative to do that that's not necessarily fair and the fact is look you've already been taxed at your income and so it's a lot easier for governments to point to uh, accounts with big balances on normal coins, and it's a lot harder to point to balances and gains on privacy coins. And mm-hmm. while we're not necessarily con- no, while we're not condoning tax evasion, it's something to consider uh, simply to just protect your entry into the crypto world. Because ideally what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to hold these coins until there's a, a genuine way for us to spend them uh, and spend mm-hmm. them direct, you know, spend our, our privacy coins direct. 
Yeah, and that, that, I think you're exactly right. We're not we're not saying you should buy privacy coins because you can evade tax. What we're saying is, you know, that's definitely a factor that's going to influence some people. Um, but the main thing for us is just just having privacy is very very important. I mean, you don't like we don't have to make things public, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of pe- people being able to see who I'm sending money to and from because you know in the same way I don't might make my regular bank statements public. Mm. You know, I'm happy to like the government if they ask my bank they can see all my statements and that's you know to an extent i have to just accept that that's how things are but i don't necessarily want people just knowing how much i have who i'm sending things to who i'm getting things from not for any reason of nefarious purposes but it's just privacy like i like the peace of mind knowing that yeah i i'm a little more sort of like safe i i rather not have everything out in the public domain and it's okay to feel that way too i think that's the thing like Mm. we don't need to be Defensive. And what we're trying to get across, we don't need to be defensive about wanting to be private, you know, because mm. for most of, we, we've talked about this before, but for most of human history, governments haven't been able to look into your affairs like the way they can today, you know? And you talk about, like, you look at the American settlers, for example, they they moved over to America um, from, from mainly from the UK, but also from other countries, and they went out on their own and... And their money was their own. You know, they could store it wherever they wanted and they could do whatever they wanted with it. And when someone came in talking about even just a small breach of that uh, to tax certain transactions at the source, there was a war over it. You know, so it's, mm. it's not like this has always been the way things have been. And yeah, I don't think we should feel guilty for wanting to be a little bit more private to return to mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. where our affairs are generally, genuinely our own and we mm-hmm. don't have Big Brother watching over every single transaction that we make. I think that's okay. And we're also just trying to make sure that, you know, you're trying to make sure that you're secure in three years' time. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, how hard is it going to be for people to say, oh, this public blockchain address is Matt from the FOMO show? Like, mm. uh, you don't particularly want that. So it's almost safeguard keep, keeping yourself a little more covered for a couple of years down the line. Mm. Exactly. So there are a number of different privacy coins that we've been looking at for a while. Um, one of the big ones that you've heard, if you've listened to our show before, you've heard us talk about it and shill it before because we both love it and 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 own it. Um, but it's really worth looking at. It's called Pivx. P I V X. Uh, it's got about a six hundred and thirty million dollar market cap, um, and it stands for Private Instant Verified Transactions. Um, tell, tell us a bit more about that and how it works. Yeah, mate. So, it's an anonymity-focused crypto, and it's originally a hard fork of the cryptocurrency Dash. So, if you jump on CoinMarketCap or whatever, look at the top 10, you'll see Dash in there. Dash was a, a, originally a fork of Bitcoin, um, and it's built on a lot of the same technology, but they significantly expanded and then PIVX hard forked away from that and expanded it again. And look, for those of you guys that don't remember, a, a hard fork is essentially where you take the code of something, you copy it, and then you begin a new blockchain or a project. So things are the same up till that point, and then they start diverging. Mm. The first thing that changed when they diverged was that they took the mining algorithm from proof of work, which is what Bitcoin is and what Dash is and what a lot of the others are, which means that you mine with an algorithm on these big computers and that's um, and your chance of getting paid out and mining a block to the blockchain is based on the power of your computer. Mm, they mm. took that and they changed it to another algorithm, which is a lot newer, called proof of stake. And proof of stake essentially involves computers staking with their wallets. So you host the blockchain on your computer still, but you just use mm. some of your PC power to secure the network. And then every now and then, the the network will look at how many coins you have. And based on that, it'll give you a percentage chance to write a block. So eventually, you know, your computer will just be sitting there for days, securing the networks, monitoring all the transactions, checking there's no irregularities. Uh, And then all of a sudden, it'll say, now it's your turn and you get to write the block. Uh, and and, And you get paid out in the coin for writing that block. So, so rather than proof of work, which is wasteful mining, solving mathematical problems which don't actually have a, a tangible benefit outside of getting a cryptocurrency reward, mm. so that's proof of work. Proof of stake is where you're actually keeping the network active, helping it secure, less wasteful on electricity, and you get rewarded for it. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like my Pivx, for example, my Pivx wallet, it just sits on a little Raspberry Pi, which is a it's a sixty dollar computer. Uh, it runs on a modified Linux, and I just keep it on all year round. And it, I think, it uses about twenty dollars worth of electricity for the entire year. Um, right. And I will normally get to write a block once every once every week. Sometimes once every five or six days, you know, so it's, and, and the payout for that at the moment is great because Pivx is so far up, but compared to like a mining farm somewhere in China, you know, the, the energy usage is just astronomically smaller. Mm. So we'll be covering, um, we'll be covering staking and uh, Raspberry Pis and uh, down the line. So mm. yeah, we'll, we'll update you on that and there'll be a guide on our site as well. Yeah. Proof of stake is something that we really love, and it's something that we think is actually much more beneficial than this proof of work, like what Bitcoin is built on. So we'll keep talking more about that as we go on. Yeah. So, so Pivx essentially it's got Dash. It's a hard fork from Dash, which is already quite quick, and that's why they they called it digital cash. But Dash kind of, you know, you, you get the image of it being quite quick as well. Then they changed it to proof of stake, which was the the next great thing that they incorporated into their coin. And they also kept the masternodes from Dash. And masternodes are essentially PCs that host the entire blockchain and also have a certain amount of the currency. So masternodes in PIVX, you have to have at least 10,000 PIVX, which is approximately now 110,000 US dollars. Um, And you need a certain percentage of uptime. So you need to be up the majority of the time because the network is relying on you to secure the network almost all the time. Whereas, you know, like uh, the little guys can kind of drop in, drop out. It doesn't really matter. Um, and what it also does is that it gives the master nodes a certain percentage of the governance vote uh, and also a certain percentage of the rewards. So they split the rewards about 50-50 between the master nodes and the smaller stakers. So the guys with a lot of PIVX have invested a lot in the project early are incentivized to keep securing the network because they get a significantly bigger proportionately uh, piece of the pie than everyone else who's smaller. But what it does is it also guarantees that the network is going to stay online and that people mm-hmm. are going to want to keep their computers open to the network. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that's, so that's another couple of really good elements to it. PIVX is also open source. So there's developers, uh, but anyone can help improve. The devs at the moment hold a significant portion of the coins. That's what incentivizes them to uh, keep working on the project. But they're very, very welcoming um, of people coming in and and trying to improve things. And uh, that's another thing that's really stuck out to me with with this coin. But the, the most... The most attractive element to it all, of course, is that it is a privacy coin. Now, with Pivx, with the um, they've recently implemented zero coin. Um, now, Pivx is very focused on the privacy, and zero coin is um, essentially um, a way that you can create very, very private transactions through what they call zero knowledge cryptography. Now, you don't need to be an expert to understand, but essentially, zero coin, um, you can mint any coin found on a public ledger into a private coin. You can then send that private coin to anyone and your identity isn't revealed. So that's the long and short of it. So an example would be, I have 500 PIV. Now, what I can do is I can take 300 of those PIV um, and mint them into Z PIV. So that creates, basically turns them from regular um, the coins into private coins. So then I'd have you know 300 Z PIV, these private ones, and 200 of my regular PIV remaining. I can then send those 300 Z PIV to Matt, who will, re- who will receive them as 300 regular PIV. So what that is, is basically it's um, it's creating a private, I'm turning my regular publicly um, viewable currency and I'm sort of making I'm making them private through a minting process. I can then send those to Matt, who just receives them as normal money, and then he can mint those and send them privately to other people. Mm. So it's it's all it, it's a really elegant solution because there are other coins out there that are kind of half privacy coins. that have these things called mixes, and you can send all your coins to an address, and then if other people send the same amount of coins, they all get mixed together, and you get the coins returned to you. But this one essentially allows you to take your PIVX and keep it in your wallet and then whenever you want to pay with it, you just mint it as a as a zero as a Z PIV or a Z PIV and you send it as a Z PIV, but the person who receives it gets it as a normal coin. 
So it lets mm. you privatize it at the point of sending it, at the mm. point of transaction. Mm. But it keeps the currency relatively together. You know, you don't have all these mm. ZPIVs floating around then once they've been minted. It's essentially just making it really private when you send it. But as people receive it, it, it normalizes it again. Mm-hmm. So the pros of PIVX is that it's fast. It's They have a 60-second block time, which means in 60 seconds or less, your transaction will be confirmed and available in the other person's wallet, um, which is much faster than a lot of the main, main coins that you would have heard about. Um, it's got very, very low transaction fees. It's secure. Um, it's got active developers. They're working on it around the, well, pretty much around the clock, around the planet. Um, it's a great community. Yeah, it's an amazing community, Matt. I, I um. I was, I'm on the Discord a fair bit. It was a Slack and now it's a Discord. And a lot of my picks, like my other crypto picks, have actually come from the trading guys that sit in the PIVX Discord. Um, they're very, very open with their information and what they're looking at. And a lot of the little tips that I've picked up have, um, has, has come from there. So very helpful, mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's also got a, 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 f- a wallet available on uh, Android. And I think they've got one on coming up for iPhone. Yeah. And it's also integrated with a lot of these uh, multi-coin wallets. So Jax, uh, Coinomi, uh, two of the big wallets there. And, and being integrated in these multi-coin wallets means that it's more likely that newcomers will actually be able to pick it up and get into it. Yeah, yeah. And look, the, the, the other one that I want to circle back around to too is um, is the zero coin thing again because they are the only staking coin that has implemented this, this protocol at all. So you will not find another proof of stake coin that is also a zero coin coin. Um, and that makes it incredibly valuable because it's energy efficient and it's private. And mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. said that they couldn't do it. There was a lot of skepticism around them getting this done. And, and granted, it did take them longer than they thought it was going to, but now it's chugging away and it, it really is working. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a huge pro that they've implemented what is kind of like an industry standard protocol for privacy into something that's proof of stake and then the first ones to do it. Mm. And I think that's why you're going to see a lot of interest in it in the future. But there are some cons, aren't there, mate? Mm. So with wallets, it's it can be a little intimidating when you install the wallet, I'm trying to work out what you're doing when you're trying to mint these ZPIV. And usability is going to become much more important in the future. Um, now, while it is available on many different sort of uh, uh, wallets, you can only actually do the uh, the minting within the um, official wallets. Mm. Um, it's kind of it can be hard to buy things with it as well. Um, yeah, with cryptocurrency, it's uh, there aren't so many payment gateways that accept PIVX right now. Um, it's growing, but it's still very small. Yeah, and, and obviously there can also be some confusion with ZPIV versus PIV. You've got all these different PIVX fly, flying around, but I think all you need to remember is that it's only ZPIV in your wallet. The moment it leaves your wallet, it's a regular PIVX again. But yeah, look, it's, it, it's proof of stake, and I think that's why we're so big on it. We just love proof of stake so much. It's a really energy-efficient way to do things and it also just rewards you for securing the network with even a little little computer so you can essentially earn interest on your money with little to no effort once you set it up which is great so while pivx is the the privacy coin that we're biggest on there are a number of other ones out there that are really worth looking at so we're going to riff through them and the next one we want to look at is cloak coin it's got about it's Got about $122 million market cap. Uh, Matt was actually the person who told me about this very recently, but very fast. It has a 60 second block time, and you can currently make it's proof of stake as well. And you can actually make about 6% return a year from staking these coins. But no, with Cloak, Cloak Coin, they're looking at a different way of um, making private transactions using uh, what's called the Enigma encryption, which is something that Cloak have actually created, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's 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 their own work, um, as far as I know, anyway. And it, it's it's essentially completely different to Zerocoin, which is what most of the other things operate on. It's really interesting. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it myself. But look, I, from from reading through the white paper, it, it looks like it could it could actually work. I think it's I think it's quite an elegant solution from what I've seen. And look, the, at the end of the day, Cloakcoin it's only at about I think 120 million dollar market cap, so mm-hmm. it's it's relatively unknown. 
uh, but it's got a good team behind it. This Enigma thing has kind of been a, a bullet from the blue. They've Cloakcoin's been around for about three years in various different forms, and I think it kind of fell by the wayside a lot as, as newer projects mm-hmm. came up. But this Enigma thing could really be a game changer. Yikes, it actually went up 50% in the last 24 hours. Well, at the time of recording, but um, there is, they're limited to actually f- about 5 million cloak coins in circulation. So that's really small, actually, the total supply. Mm. It's really interesting. Cloak yeah, coins. So that's another one to look at. Uh, oh, yeah. All the links for these privacy coins are in the show notes. We'll just put them one by one so you can just check them all out. The next one is Monero. Um, six billion. It's about worth about six billion dollars in total market cap, um, and it's yeah again rapid one minute block time. It's proof of work, um, but it's arguably the the most well known privacy coin. Yeah, so essentially the the transactions in it aren't linkable to the sender, so that you you have a new address for each time you send. So what it means is that no one ever really knows where anything else is coming from, and like you said, it's the most well known one. It's got a big team behind it. Uh, they're very very vocal. On on uh, a lot of platforms, uh, a lot of social media, a lot of podcasts. A lot of people really like Monero. It's still a proof of work, uh, which I feel like handicaps it a bit. Uh, but the blocks are getting written every 60 seconds. So it's the same second 60-second block time as, as PIVX and Cloak. But, yeah, it's, it's another one to definitely look at. Um, mm-hmm. And if you want something that's a bit more proven and a bit more... Uh, has had a has had a lot more interest in it than Monero's probably the way to the way to go. So the next two, um, Zcoin and Zcash. Zcoin's worth about four hundred uh, four hundred thirty five million dollar market cap. Zcash is about one point five billion. Um, now with Zcoin, it's yeah proof of work again. Um, it's zero coin based and it has well it's a ten minute block time. It's one that I've kind of been a fan of because it's zero coin based and that's kind of exciting to me. Whereas you've got a Zcash where which is worth $1.5 billion. And they've got a two and a half minute block time. And they've got a lot of the developers of the um, zero coin protocol. A lot of their creators are actually involved in Zcash. Mm. Uh, and a few of the privacy coins actually use this, um, the code that Zcash have actually built. Mm. So those are, those are two really interesting ones. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of others. Um, there's Zencash. Uh, so it's, it gets a bit confusing with all the different types of cash but um, and coins, but <laughs> let's start with Zed. But uh, yeah, Zencash, which is a lot smaller, they're um, not necessarily trying to just be a currency by themselves. They're trying to facilitate other things like communications and publishing and all sorts of different things. Um, their market cap is relatively low as well, so it's only $118 million, So that's another one to check out. Um, it's proof of work as well. And then there's Verge. Um, and look, we're not going to cover Verge too much, but Verge is, has been quite a controversial currency and, and, and it's been subject to a fair few pump and dumps as well um, mm. over the time. Uh, they're very vocal in their criticism of PIVX, which obviously knowing the PIVX project and knowing how much they're trying to create a really good privacy coin, it's just, I don't know, it's a bit off-putting for me to see to see Verge behave the way they do, the developers. So, yeah, um, it's a 30-second block time. I'm not convinced on their privacy capabilities either. But Yeah, because there, there, was, there was some sort of chatter about the fact that their algorithm might not have been the most secure. Mm, yeah, or... I think there was uh, IP addresses were getting leaked or something. There was something in there that just wasn't wasn't real good. Um, gut so, feel on that. You know, feel free to check it out, but the gut feel really says, you know, I'm, I, I'm personally avoiding Verge. Mm. Um, yeah. Yep, so am I. So, yeah, you can see the list of all of those um, currencies and the URLs. You can find those in our show notes. Um, but at the end of the day, we were going to sort of thank cryptography for this because, I mean, I'm not a mathematician myself, um, but that doesn't mean that I don't benefit from what that does. And it's it's the cryptography behind a lot of this is so useful. Mm. But then you have got risks. I mean, the biggest risk, I mean, I don't code um, sort of, I don't code software like that. So, you know, there's a lot of trust in it and you've got to trust that it's just the software that has been built well. You know, there could be that there's a there's a bug in, you know, uh, the security protocols, mm. which could render, you know, a lot of the security null and void. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's some fatal flaw, you know, that hasn't been found out, it could be like a, a hack of a company, you know, all of a sudden all of the addresses could be compromised and, 
and the whole thing could come crashing down because, you know, you're really relying on the code and that's always a risk. And I think it's hard to know which teams are up to the challenge, especially as these things get bigger. Like if, if 2018 is the big year for privacy coins that we think it may be, privacy coins are going to have a lot of people you know, trying to, to crack crack them open, you know, and attack them. Mm. And, and that could include governments because if, you know, we do we talk about tax and, and, and people and organised crime and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that for people that do want to evade tax or organised crime or do organised crime or whatever, privacy coins will be very uh, attractive for money laundering and all sorts of different things like that. So there's a chance that governments are going to hire pretty mm. smart dudes, you know, to, to try, and, try and crack yeah. that open. And if anything, that's what the Snowden leaks did show us is that the, you know, the nation states can, like, do have very, very talented teams of developers, hackers who work on their behalf. And that's not something I'd, you know, I wouldn't want to bet against them too much. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, the other thing to say is, too, is that they may be such a threat if they really start getting a lot of press that they might be at you know, outlawed outright in some countries, you know. Yeah. So um, another thing to know is if you're using privacy coins, you're probably going to be suspect. Now, while you shouldn't have to defend your right to privacy, some people will just assume you're just doing it to dodge tax. And as Matt mentioned earlier, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily want to have to pay tax twice, you know, tax to the source, tax when we spend, tax when we earn, tax when we die, you know, and pass things on to other people. Tax, you know, left, right and centre. Mm. But yeah, it's it's you, if you're buying privacy coins, it's you're going to be a lot like people are going to sus- suspect you of of you know being up to no good. Same as you know, if you have a VPN, you're suddenly on a uh, you're, you're being flagged, despite the fact you just want to have you know secure internet and you don't want people watching what you browse. But it's just another of those things. Yeah, look, it's just it's the world we live in these days, and. Mm. Um, I just think the big thing is don't feel guilty. You know, like if you if you are wanting to protect your privacy and your security, that's not something to be guilty about. The other thing to say is too is that with the tax implications, I don't know of any country that will tax you for your unrealized gains. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. But I think the way that we are planning to deal with it is that until we can pay with it directly and we don't have to convert back into a currency, mm. we're not planning on spending too much with our privacy coins, just mm. because it's, it's it really isn't worth it until you can. If you have to convert it back, then there's tax implications because you're you're coming back into the currency mm. of your country. Mm. But if you don't, if you just hold it, you know you're not making you're not you're not technically realizing any of your gains. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not uh, until you sell where you have to be taxed, well, yeah. at least in some countries. Um, but yeah, and as as we said, like well, obviously we're not investment advisors, but. My gut feel is that if I picked up, you know, most of those privacy coins we've talked about and come back in two years, something tells me they'll be worth a little bit more than they are today. <laughs> but yeah, not investment advice, but that's what I'm doing personally. Mm. So yeah, look, it's, it's a really exciting time. Um, definitely go and check out the privacy coins. We'll try and get something on the website in the not too distant future for a bit yep, of yep, a roundup yep. of privacy coins based on this. But I think they are one of the greatest areas of crypto to be looking at simply because they are the ones that are that are really thinking about where this space is going to go and they're mm-hmm. thinking about mm-hmm. how to position themselves to best take advantage of this new technology and mm. and what it can do. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll we'll put something together on our website for that soon um, on privacy coins so you can look forward to that soon. Yeah, so that that kind of wrap, that wraps it up for this show. Um, if you know someone who might enjoy what you've just heard, you know, please do feel free to share with them. Um, and you can find us at FOMO dot show. And the the website is starting to take shape. And we've got a start here page, got our buy crypto page. You know, FOMO dot show slash one hundred and one. Yeah, you can send your friends there, and we're we're going to keep expanding it. You can see some of the tools that we've talked about, some of our favourite tools. We're going to be putting those into into posts on the site, um, and we're going to build it out. You know, get it's going to end up being our sort of one resource, our growing mm. resource of things to look at. Mm. And look, if you do want to see something on the side as well, just just swing us a message. Um, as always, we'd love your feedback. 
And mm. speaking of feedback, you can jump on our Slack at FOMO.show slash Slack. And we're really starting to get a decent little community going on there. There's some great conversation going on. Mm. Uh, people are sharing things. And so, if you're looking for somewhere to, to interact with other people that think similar to you and to also have somewhere to, you can find out what's going on and just, yeah, just come and chat with us. Yeah, you can jump on our Slack. You can follow us on Twitter at the underscore FOMO underscore show. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the FOMO show. And you can um, you can see our episodes on YouTube. They get uploaded a couple of days after they're on the regular site um, at FOMO.show slash YouTube. Well, that's it for us here at the FOMO show. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Uh, if you like our show, please subscribe in your podcast app of choice. And uh, yeah, happy new year. I'm Matt. And I'm Joe. And as always, remember, no FOMO. All I was going to say was, this Australia is such a big country, you know, man. Like, I've driven so far, I'm in a different time zone to you. Yeah. Yep, you're That's ridiculous. Right like, I've driven, like, further than in the distance of the United Kingdom, like, top to bottom. That's ridiculous. And I've got, like, I've barely dented the map, you know. That's right. Like, you look on the map, it's so, what's the word? It's so diminishing to look at the map. Like, you feel like you've travelled so far. But in the scale of Australia, it's like a pinprick. It's ridiculous. Mm. This, country, this country is too large. Are you loving it, though, mate? Like, Mate, it's such good views, though. I mean, like, every scene is an amazing scene. Like, there are mountains, beautiful ranges, like, the most amazing land, country. Kangaroos jumping across the road as you're driving along. Just, it is just such a beautiful place. Mm. Um, if you've not been... At some point in your life, um, it's worth taking three weeks out of your t- out of your life and visiting Australia. It's uh, just, like rent a car when you're here. Remember that we drive on the left, and just take a look. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah, I've, I drove from Queensland down to New South Wales. Absolutely fantastic country. They're building this on Ethereum, though, aren't they? There's always a down downer, isn't there? There's always like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, and we're just, what else is going to happen? Well, we've got this great platform and we're just running on, you know, dial up internet. Yeah, pull the scab off. And That's right. Just get into the veins. Dig around. Yeah, that's fine. Just a week without internet. I've seen no biggie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a bit scared now that you say it, but oh well. <laughs> Make lemonade. Ah, do you need your, do you forgot to bring a wallet, silly man, like you forgot to bring coins, silly man, well don't worry, I have a Barclay card.